Hello my soccer universe, what a finish to group B did we have, the group of death. In the last second, Italy more or less eliminated Croatia already. Thanks to a great Sakania shot for speaking of group of death. We also have to face the obvious one. There was only one really good team in there. In Spain there was one that was kind of entertaining in Albania but just didn't have the class. And then two more or less disappointing ones. Italy again kind of didn't know what to make of it and for Croatia it seems like the end of a road, the end of a long road and again unfortunately despite him now holding a record as being the oldest goal scorer, darn! I really want Ivica Vastic to remain in there. Luka Modric is now the oldest goal scorer, he seemed like the hero that once again pulls Croatia out of a ditch. Was not meant to be in the end, it is Italy who go through in a second place but very much a wounded animal I would have to say and that result also has some additional implications because suddenly three teams automatically qualified for the next round meaning England, meaning the Netherlands, meaning France so that takes a little bit of pressure off today's games as well but let's start Jersey matchup bingo that one was easy that one was really easy. Albania will play in their home jersey, so Spain have to go in their absolutely horrific away kit. And I think it's even more horrific if you look at the blue panels that went then all the way to the back and then onto the yellow pants. There was no blue anymore. It just looked like completely mismatched. And that I didn't like one bit. On the other side, Croatia, Italy, as you would expect, the Italy kit now with blue pants, you have the same gradient in there, I think. It looks quite fine. I still prefer my Italy in white pants, but I understand against Croatia you have to go all blue. And I think this one looked all right. I actually want to start this one with Spain's games against Albania because that's a little bit less consequential. Spain made 10 changes and still looked really good. And especially the goal where Olmo played into Ferran Torres. What a pretty goal that was. The pass was already brilliant by Olmo, but the way Ferran Torres runs from the outside of the defender into the box, then takes the shot, it has a nice swerve on it, onto the post, into the net, and Spain were up and running. Yes, Albania gave it a go and actually had quite a few shots on goal, but it always seemed that Spain are overall in control. Spain win the group, we already knew that. They have nine points, they have yet to concede a goal. They are a real force in this tournament. Will they go down the road of previous Spain teams that can be dazzling in the group stage and then fall apart? Or is this more like what we saw in 2008 or 2012 when Spain was undeniable all the way through? This is still to be seen. I, I think overall this was a very impressive Spain performance. In the entire group stage they were the best teams at the Euros so far. And for Albania I can say they were actually enriching the tournament. They had the earliest goal against Italy, they had the great equalizer late on against Croatia, they gave us some emotions as well, yes the player was banned for nationalistic chance. With Balkan teams you always have to take the good with the bad, but I think they were really enriching this tournament and probably would have deserved a little bit more than the solitary point that they got, but at least they got a point this time in a really really tough group. And with that let's go over to Leipzig or as a German commentator called it Leipzig because of all the Croatian fans there. For the big showdown between Croatia and Italy it was pretty clear from the get-go Italy need just the point, Croatia need the win. A draw is most likely not enough because not only do you have only two points which is very little but they also have a rather bad goal difference. So for Croatia the win was vital and the support was there. There was only a little blue corner, everything else was all Croatia, which made for quite the scene, I gotta say. And Croatia started out well in the game, put the Italians on the back foot and I don't know what this Spalletti side was thinking. Safety first, because they were very much holding back. I'm not sure I like that. Because this Italy team is not good in defending. Yes, in Calafiori they have probably one of the more outstanding players of this tournament. Maybe even for many a revelation. Although, you know, me as a Serie A watcher, I knew about Calafiori that he is good. There was an early Sucic shot. But then after 15-20 minutes Italy felt into the game. Forgot to mention Spalletti made many changes to the first team lineup. It was 
uh, changed Italy's side, but that got into the game and probably was then the better team in the first half. Retegi had at least one good shot in there. He was always a nuisance, but the biggest chance fell to Bastoni when he had a clear header and could not pull it into the net. You could say it was a great save by the goalkeeper, but honestly, if he places that better and not straight at the goalkeeper, this should have been the 1-0 for Italy. Second half, again, same story. Croatia needed to come out, Italy held them at bay, Italy ceded possession even to Croatia for most of the time. And then there was a penalty call. And I remember I was sitting on the couch and said, no, I don't need that penalty. And then you look at the replay and say, yeah, it's a clear penalty. I mean, what is Fratesi doing? And so Luka Modric steps up and it starts probably the craziest 33 second sequence that we've seen in the entire tournament. Maybe it started even earlier with the graphic that showed Modric had, you know, one converted and one saved this season in UEFA competitions. In any case, Modric steps up, it's not a good penalty and Donnarumma can save that one rather easily. The ball is played out, Italy quickly lose them again, Croatia made a build-up play, cross in, mega save from Donnarumma, but on the rebound you see Modric who stayed in the game, shook off all the frustration of the missed penalty, twists himself and puts Croatia up 1-0 big celebrations follow and that all within 33 seconds and as I said Modric is now the oldest goal scorer at the Euros his first Euros were in 2008 where he also scored a penalty against Austria and now he dethrones Austrian Ivica Vastic who of course is of Croatian heritage as the oldest goal scorer and yes the last loser record but then records are there to be broken and that changed in the game because you would know it, Italy actually need to do something now. They bring on quickly Chiesa for Di Marco and keep pressing, keep pushing forward and pegging Croatia very much back. And it totally meant that Croatia now were on the defensive. And I would say for about 20 minutes, Italy were really threatening, had nice passing moves. Again, a Bastoni header that should have been in but it really seemed that the game will fizzle out and Italy will not find the winner and Croatia can cruise. Well, also gotta say, Croatia, for everything that they did defensively, they didn't kill off Italy because there were plenty of chances there. And like for the goal where the Italian defense was mostly ball watching, I felt that this Italy defense could be had. A better team would have taken them probably apart. And then Calafiori gets the ball in midfield, makes a run almost misdribbles it, puts it out to the left to Zakani who had come on for Darmian and with a wonderful shot curls it into the top corner in the 98th minute with more or less the last kick of the game because there was just a kick of taking afterwards. A beautiful goal to send Italy on to the next round. Not necessarily a beautiful goal capping a great performance. Ah, it was a gut punch for Croatia because they very much know this is the end. They are more or less done now. It's only a 1% chance that they can advance. So yeah, doesn't look good for Italy. At least they stay in the tournament and you know, traditionally Italy usually find another level in the knockout stage, but I'm not sure that this Italy actually will. And also I have to say, facing a Switzerland team that gave Germany quite some trouble, that is rel relatively solid. <sighs> We gotta see, we gotta see, but I don't have my hopes high for that. Quickly on to the projections. As I said, we have not only Italy qualifying, but we also have England, France and the Netherlands through Austria, more or less. I mean, I think it's 99.54% that Austria go through. So they're also more or less through. And Croatia very much on the outside looking in for this third place ranking. I think they would need that England and potentially Denmark win today and then they also need in Group F's results going their way. The bracket also didn't change because it went as expected so we still have a France against Spain final which might be interesting but you know it might not go this way it's just if all the favorites win which they rarely do. Speaking of Austria they play today it's a big match against the Netherlands because you could secure second spot and if we saw the bracket I mean second spot actually would mean that you would play the second team from group E. On a third place you could play England or Portugal or Spain even so Austria very much would like to have second place. The Netherlands of course want to win the group. Austria actually have a chance of winning the group if they beat the Netherlands and Poland get a point of France. Not sure if that. France-Poland of course will Kylian play 
I honestly would probably save him for this game as well, although France still have to score a goal by themselves. And then in the evening, England against Slovenia, that should be for conclusion, I think it's more Denmark against Serbia. That's a shootout, more or less, of who will go through. That might be exciting one, I would give the edge to Denmark. So yeah, exciting evening yesterday. I think it was a good game between Croatia and Italy. Although both teams were not really convincing and that's kind of sad to see end of an era and maybe for Italy beginning of an era because even if Spalletti would have failed here he would have stayed on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!